when the secret survey came out amongst other golfers and they called him the most overrated player there was. Mm. And then he went out there and whooped all the greatest players in the world. So that tells you what's inside, Ricky, golf wise. Right. As far as popularity goes, Ricky is one of the He's the he's probably the guy that I enjoy being around the most off the golf course. He's the most down to earth, real, like the guy, the guy that you're like, man, I'd probably love to go have a beer with mm-hmm. that guy. Yes. And and it's none of it fake. It's all like what it's he's just a him and JT and like Smiley, those the all of those dudes are just fun to go out and have a beer right. with. Brooks is probably the most dominating, misunderstood golfer out there. As far as <clears throat> there are many in the golf media that are want to put the villain cape on him because of saying, like, he don't care about anything other than majors. He don't you know, ever practice. <clears throat> but a great description I heard of Brooks is like, Brooks is the kid in school who used to take like a trigonometry test mm-hmm. and, and like I, and you'd be like, this dude got ace on a trigonometry he didn't even study for it. Mm-hmm. And they don't know it that for the last eight nights in a row, this dude was doing two hours in his bedroom going over stuff with a fine tooth comb. But he could come out and be like, ah, you know, I don't even study. And you believe it. Right. No, but then, hold up, man. That's not really, that's probably not true, <laughs> you know? So, but the hard thing for people to understand is we, as fans of sports, it is very difficult as a fan of a sport to see an athlete do something that you can't do and come across as not caring about Because you want, you want your team or the players on your team or the people that you root for, or you want them to have the same passion that you have. And you want it to look like the passion you have. And Brooks's passion for golf doesn't look like most people's passion right. for golf. So the, it's, it's very easy. And I think it's, it's many media outlets are lazily putting in that box because it's easy to mm-hmm. do. Even though that is who Brooks is or what he's really about. So, you know, those guys, look, when it comes down to it right now, you got guys like Brooks, DJ, Jason, mm-hmm. JT, you know, Ricky. You keep going on and on and on down the list. You go through top, you go through the top 20 guys, and you're like, you know what? Golf's in a pretty good place right, right. now. But that also that makes it maddening. One of the things that was so difficult when Tiger was gone was because the level of golf is so high now, there isn't one dude that can go out and dominate. Jason Day, go he would dominate for five, six months. And then he's going to fall off. Mm-hmm. A bit, and guess what? He's going to come up and take his spot. Or that's when remember Spieth made his run. And he was under mm-hmm. him for a yeah. while. And now... Oh, has anybody seen Jordan? Jordan? I mean, is he on a mission? <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of how far right. those are like that. It's like, you know, DJ, same thing. DJ looked like a world beater for a minute, and then it was like he gone for a little mm-hmm. bit. And then he'll just shut up, boom, and eat a couple trophies, and I'll see y'all later. Like, but that's not, it's not golfers kind of not caring. It's just that the level of golf is that high that a lot of guys, B games just don't get it nowadays, you know. So, but yeah, as far as the the name guys like Brooks, Justin Thomas, Ricky, Jace, like those dudes, they're all deservedly so up there. And you know, you still got guys like Justin Rose. You, you, I don't believe Justin Rose is done. Yeah, he still got some uh, left. I think. Yeah. Still got a little something, something in there some way, you know what I mean? But that's, you know, the, I don't necessarily attribute everything for the club change for him, but I think it had an effect. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we'll we'll see when we get back out there playing again. 
you know, yeah. win, then that's a big, that's a big, and right. But that, so that's my next question, actually. Um, so I heard we heard some news on I think it was Twitter or on the ESPN or something. They said the golf is expected to return in June, right? Is that is that a confirmed month or? Well, the the the, PGA. the tour has come out a new updated revised schedule for the third time, mm-hmm. and the first tour that will be the Charles Schwab Challenge, right. which is June eighth to the fourteenth, and that is seven. It was seven weeks on Monday. Now, there's a lot of this is out, but what I've been telling people what this is like is this is like when you were in high school and on Monday and Tuesday, you told all your friends, yo, party at my house on Saturday. <laughs> right. You tell your mom yeah. <laughs> that you up on the party. Mm-hmm. So everybody was like, yo, the party's going down. And then by Friday, you know, I was like, yo. Over the bar, I'm like, um, hold up, man. I told my mom she not oh. <laughs> kind of like that, right? It's like that. It's like that because on the teleconference that the tour mm-hmm. had, there were a lot of questions that they couldn't answer. Number one, there's 25 players and 35 caddies that are still outside of the country. They don't know how to get right them. with the travel bans that are in place right now. They don't know how they're going to get these dudes into the mm-hmm. country. So you're going to tell me you're telling 25 of your members, hey, man, sorry, y'all can't play, even if you want to. Like that, you, are you going to start a legal battle? Because that's what it could happen, potentially. Then I talked to the mayor of Fort Worth. And and the tour, also on the teleconference, the, this was two separate conversa- conversations. How is the interaction between player and caddy going to work? And are players getting tested before they come to the event? Or are they tested at the event before they go into the playing arena, which would be like the lock? Are you going to test the guy before he goes into the locker room with all the other guys? Right. What Addy? They added spots. There's 144 guys. That's 288 people that are now going to travel other than the guys that are there in Fort Worth with Ryan Palmer. Mm-hmm. Who's a member. <clears throat> How are they getting there? And then what I asked the mayor was, infrastructure-wise, are you ready? Like, where 280 people, where are they staying? What hotel? And who's working at these hotels? How is it going to work restaurant-wise? How are, how are these people getting food when they're at the hotel? And the mayor didn't know. The mayor was hopeful that they all of, and not just the players. Don't forget, there are tour officials, tour people, and then that doesn't even start the amount of time that is going to get there, stay there, be fed, be put up. Get no one knows how any of that is going to happen or how that's going right. to work. There's another basic problem: Colonial Country Club itself is open right now to its members. But you're not going to allow the general public in. And you can't allow the members in, even if they're tested, because they're going out. You can't test all of their families and all their kids and grandkids yeah. unless you. And so how are you going to keep them out at a hotel? How are you going to keep one? If you have a hotel that's specific for the PGA Tour and this event, you can't let one outsider come stay in that hotel. Right. How is that going to work? How are you blocking off a complete, a whole, like this, all of these questions have not been answered. And now you're going to try and answer them in six weeks in the middle of this pandemic. Mm. So it's hopeful that it's going to get done and it's not necessarily impossible, but it is not like right. Because of because of every aspect that goes down. Now, one golfer that I talked to, too, you know, to to be blunt, said at some point you got to poop or get off right. the pot. At some point when we go out, we're, you're going to risk catching this thing, you know. And hopefully, when when that happens, there is a vaccine or 
there is some there will be something that you can take that will help prevent you from dying. You know, hopefully will that be ready in six to seven weeks? I don't know. I don't know that either. But the play the other player that I talked to said for those first four events, when they don't there's gonna be no fans right. that the player the player doesn't believe they're even gonna let family on the golf huh. course. Huh. Which yeah. I agree. You know, less is more. If we're really going to try and do this, less right. is more. But there are so many questions, you know, that now we're six and a half weeks out. There's so many questions that have to be answered that, like I said, it's, hey, man, there's a party at my house yeah. on Saturday. Did you tell your mm-hmm. nah, not yet, but it's all right. No, it ain't all yeah. right. Yeah, that's, yeah it's going to be interesting to see what they do. But um, do, you see, I, do you see Tiger, uh, do you see another... Uh, major in Tiger Woods. Do you think Tiger Woods will compete in in another tournament or major in his career or get in contention? Yeah. yeah. I'm never I look, I learned my lesson. I learned my lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I said from from when he came back 2018, I used to tell people all the time, look, Tiger Tiger's gonna win golf tournaments. I just don't think he's gonna win majors. And the reason that I would say that was because the stars had to would have to align so perfectly right. because guys like DJ Brooks, Francesco Molinari, the, the dudes like Francesco Molinari, you don't look at you'd be like, yo, that's a major contender mm-hmm. right there. You would look at him and be, and um, what time are pizza gonna be done? <laughs> right? And he's one of the greatest golfers in the world. Now you take all of those factors from. Jason Day to Ricky trying to get a major to DJ to Brooks, all of those dudes, Tony Finau being right. All of those dudes would have to not be in a good place. And when's the last time that all of those dudes were not in a good place golf wise. And then all of that said, all of it lined up right. on Sunday mm. from the 12th tee from the group in front of Tiger and then in Tiger's group. And it was like, you know, and the other thing that really it came down to was Tiger remembered how to win a major. And and it was Nicholas. I, I did an interview with uh, Jack Jr. Mm-hmm. We were talking about 86 and, and uh, Jack Nicholas II Jr. was with Nicholas on the boat, on Nicholas's boat. They were fishing, but then they went in to watch the Masters. Right. Sunday, and Nicholas on twelve looked at the and was like, "Tiger's gonna win," and he didn't even have the lead at the time. And Junior was like, "What are you talking about, Dad? Why would you say that?" And he goes, "Cause I can see Tiger remembers how to win, and he could see it in Tiger's <clears throat> face, which was goosebump moment talking to Junior when he was met to setting up how it all happened." And so now that Tiger's done that already. And now that there's this really long break where no one can play golf and Tiger especially is not going to feel behind the eight ball or whatever. <clears throat> now, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen that when we, when we play the Masters in November and then play it again four months later, mm. you know? So I will never say that Tiger can't, get into contention and win a major again because stranger things have happened. Right. Um, so before I let you go, I got a couple more things for you. Um, what advice would you give to these young uh, athletes or young uh, kids that that's trying to be like you as a caddy or being like a golfer? I know golf is a tough sport because it's all about uh, aiming and a lot of technique. But what advice would you give these young kids that's uh, trying to be in the same business as you in the golf business? Man, I can't tell you how many times I get emails from journalism students that are like juniors in college and stuff. And they're like, man, I would love to do what you do. Like, how do you do? And I tell everybody the same thing. Do not follow my path unless like you want to be homeless under a bridge or something. Because (laughs) I never went to college. Like I, I was not a good student at all. I wasn't. And it's, there are way too many other people that are journalists and really good at 
what they do. And there are so many different ways to become and do what you mm. want. But for me, it was, for me, it was the, for me, it was answering most questions with, yeah, why right. not? And so from when I started doing stand up comedy, that was always my dream to do stand up comedy, to get a TV show, you know, and, and do entertainment. If you would have told me when I was doing stand up comedy, if you would have told me in 1991 that I was going to caddy on the PA tour and end up working for ESPN, I would have probably told you to go pee in a cup and go to eight <laughs> beds or, <Right>. or, <laughs> or really, really good stuff. Crazy. <clears throat> but when opportunities came up, I just, yeah, why not? So when Robert Gomez called me and said, hey, man, come caddy for me for a week because I just want to have fun on the golf course. And I said, yeah, why not? And then when Sirius XM came to me and said, hey, would, on your off weeks, would you come try doing play-by-play on the radio? Which I laughed at. It was like golf on the right. radio. It's watch paint. <laughs> now you think people are going to listen to it. Well, but I said, yeah, why not? And it turns out the head of ESPN and the head of Fox Sports at mm-hmm. the time, both golf nuts, they were listening. <clears throat> and that's, you know, kind of how things happen. But my advice, the advice that I give to everyone, no matter what, young golfers, if you're just starting off playing golf and wanting to get into the playing side of it, just have fun. Make sure you're having fun. Because if you're not, if you're having fun, it's not work. Right. Once, once you start feeling like it's a grind, then and you lose the enjoyment of of what you're doing, then then it then you don't give it everything that you have. And the reason you don't give it everything you have is because you're like, ugh. And when you feel, I mean, look at look at a guy like Sergio Garcia who actually put his clubs away for eight months and didn't touch them because he knew every time he went to the golf course, he, he just regretted being right. there. He didn't want to. So, you know, if you want something really bad, you got to keep wanting it. And so do whatever you got to do to keep wanting it and loving it. That's, and I think it's the same on the professional side. If you're doing something outside of sports, it's like, don't be afraid to say, yeah, why not? And try it. And don't be afraid to fail. Like, it's okay. It's okay to try something and go, man, I'll, that wasn't good. And you're either going to go, I'm, I want to try that again because I want to get at it. Like, I'm not cool with not being good at that. Or you're going to be like, man, I, I don't feel it. And then try something else. Like, that's it, that's okay to do too. And so... And I'm still doing that to this day. I still, you know, and people are like, hey, man, how would you feel about trying to do this? Yeah, come on. I'll try it. Why not? Why not? Mm-hmm. Who knows? It might be fun. It might be good. It's like, you know, that comes to, <laughs> I attribute that to my mom forcing me to eat vegetables. Right. You know, I would sit at the table for hours. Be like, I ain't eating those, <laughs> but you ain't getting up. Mm. You know, <laughs> when that little kid that eats one green bean, says, <laughs> 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 But eventually, that, like, at some point, you're like, man, I want green mm-hmm. beans. Why did I just say that? Right. But I really do want Brussels sprouts or whatever. Like, and it's like that, you know, for, for life is like that. It's like, you know, if you don't allow yourself to get into that, mm-hmm. run, allow yourself to be, to be in uncomfortable situations and be okay with it, then it's amazing some of the things that happen about all right. So I got a, a couple of rapid fire questions for you here. Um, the first one is, um, I, I have to ask you this. I'm a big Dallas Cowboy fan, and uh, I know that I saw, I saw. You didn't. Before we started talking. <laughs> uh oh. Oh you. <laughs> oh no. But uh, no. But I saw a picture of you that you interviewed uh, Tony Romo at some point well um so do you do you, th- do you think uh he he can be a keep uh he, he loves golf so do you think he can do you think do you see him competing in like in a pga if he if he wants to tony Robo? um maybe 
He has really good work ethic. Mm-hmm. Nice. But he's coming to the game late. Right. Compared. Now, <clears throat> could he potentially make it out on the champions, PGA Tour champions, when he's 50? Yeah, maybe. Mm. The PGA Tour itself? That's tough, man. I mean, I'll give him credit. He grinded that that first that first round uh, at Safeway. He he was grinding, you know, and on on some some a pretty good golf course. Right. Uh, he might be able to make the cut. But that being said, if I was putting my money on a professional athlete to become a professional golfer, I'm going all in on Steph. Oh, yeah, Steph Curry. Yeah. Hey, that he he's another one who likes golf. Yeah, Steph Curry. I just, he don't just like golf. That's the thing. Steph is not, he did not, Steph did not come to golf after he started playing basketball. Like, golf and basketball started at this, about the same time for him when he was very, very right. young. His hands around the greens are as good as some professionals on tour mm-hmm. right now. And that's where Romo's lacking. Romo's and you know at, when it comes to being on the tour, it's getting up and down to save those pars. Those dudes on tour, they can get up and down from a ball washer. Right, like they make par when everybody else, North drivers like us, are making triple and they're making a par or sometimes making a miracle birdie. And so that's all about short game, and that's all from doing over and. Over. And open, just being from playing golf forever. That that kind of feel comes from playing, and that, that uh, favorite uh, favorite hip hop artist. No man, there's too many. <laughs> Are you talking old school? Um, okay, uh, old, old school. That's me, like new, like I, like Common or Talib Kweli. Um, like you, I, man. But old school, like how? How are you competing against like lyricists like Rock M, like back in the day? You know what I mean? Like, how you go up against nah. And then you're going to tell me somebody better than Jay Z? Mm. Not nah. writing back. I mean, seriously, like, there's no, there is no way that I'm going to be like, there's one rapper, right. one hip hop artist. Like, there's no, yeah, that'd be like, no. Who you want to hear sing, Mary Kay or Beyonce? Right. Yes, yes, both of them. Mm-hmm. Yes. Beyonce, I, especially Beyonce. I, I like, I love Beyonce. She, she's amazing. So, yeah. And you, like, are you you going to tell me Mary J back in the day? Mary J couldn't compete. Oh no, Beyonce? she could. Yeah, she will, she could. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. That'd, be, that'd be like telling me what's your favorite movie? But no. <laughs> uh. Favorite food? All <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't. I, I don't. Um. Yeah, I don't. It literally depends on the day. There are there there are days when I'll be like, I'm gonna eat Italian mm-hmm. food for the rest of my. Life. You know what I mean? Like if I haven't done carbs in a right. long time, like I want pizza, spaghetti, like. I, you, I want all. Give me all the pastas. Give me. But then there are other days when it's like I'm never eating anything other than the Indian food oh, ever again. Nice. I love like or or it'll be like you know what I need some serious. I need some purging. So I want all Korean. Give me kimchi. Like I can't get enough. I literally there is not a food. It's the same thing. Yeah. Why yeah. not? Yeah. I'll try. Mm-hmm. Why not? Who knows? Who knows? You might love it, you know? Um, you might be in the bathroom the next morning. <laughs> like, that's the first... What people don't tell you about Kim... Like, stuff like kimchi, you know, you don't... You don't realize, like, you gotta have some time planned the next yeah. morning. <laughs> it's not one of those, I eat that last night and then get up and go the next right. day. Oh, you're gonna go. Don't worry. But wherever you think you're going to travel to, that's not happening, first thing. Same with... People don't understand. I love Indian mm-hmm. food, and I thought I loved spicy food until I made a challenge to the restaurant here in Gainesville, and that was like, man, you guys, y'all didn't make it spicy <laughs> last time. 
I thought you could make it spicy. And the guy was like, you want hot? I said, yeah, I want hot. And the, uh, all I remember him is going, okay. And when he said it, I was like, oh, I might have missed uh-huh. it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the favorite thing to do outside of golf? Outside of golf, my favorite thing to do. Outside of golf, like outside of doing stand-up and yeah. all of that. The favorite hobby? Uh, I like outdoor stuff. I like um, sporting stuff. Like I love going – I love going to the range – I love going to the range to, to shoot weapons. I like going to practice bow and arrow. I'm not. I love fishing. Right. I love the. I love anything outside. Like I like going to the beach and just being just being out, man. Just be out. But then again, I love movie. Yeah. Too. Like I would just as be as, just as happy when it's a thunderstorm outside, oh. eating a giant tub of popcorn yeah. and watching movies. That be like being out on the range shooting distance. Right. Uh, th- thoughts on the out- well, I, I, I saw so yeah uh, outdoor. You say yeah outdoor. Yeah. Um, uh, thoughts on uh, thoughts on the Michael Jordan documentary so far. Oh my gosh! <laughs> it is when you think about it. Like the world that we live in now, we are so spoiled that most of the stuff we want to watch. We just purged the whole thing, like Tiger King or like Ozark, mm-hmm. right? Freaking like all of these things. The Wire, you you name the series, we can purge it whenever we want to. When's the last time that you had a time set where you were like, "Listen, whatever was going on at this time on this night, we are sitting in front of the TV for two hours and we ain't doing right. nothing, watching this." That's what this. is. It is, oh, my God, it's must-see TV. Mm. Oh, and the fact that th- how they got all of these guys after the fact to all come back and sit down. Yeah, and it's just the, uh, yeah, it's just amazing. I'm looking forward to episode three and four on Sunday. So, yeah. yeah, like, that's all. Think about how many, as soon as those episodes are going mm. on, number one, social media, like, yo, can you see that? <laughs> and then, like, yo, what about? So and what about blah blah? blah. It actually keeps it, yeah. which is really cool too. But it also, to be a hundred percent honest, like it makes me so proud to be like, yeah, I work there. And this, uh, yeah, this, <laughs> that's um, it's, and this, uh, everybody's been posting videos on Twitter, hashtag Last Dance, and everybody be posting videos, and it's, it's crazy. It's a, but. Yeah, la- last two things here. Um, I- I've been asking all my guests this question because uh, th- about the late Kobe Bryant. Um, he was one of my role models growing up, watching him play for the Lakers. And I've been uh, getting the my guests' own perspective on Kobe Bryant. And w- w- what did Kobe Bryant mean to you and w- what he meant to you as a uh, player, uh, a family person? And uh, what does Mamba mentality mean to you? So Kobe's a dude who I never got to meet. And that's one of the things that one of the regrets that I have and I hate having regrets. I hate it. And so I regret never having gotten to meet Kobe Bryant. And as a Sixers fan and the Philadelphia guy, um, I used to hate Kobe right. because of his greatness. And you don't appreciate somebody, somebody in the moment that is beating up your team. You don't appreciate their greatness until after they're done playing. So for me, understanding the greatness of Kobe Bryant and then the greatness of the second part of his life in business and taking that same drive, I think that's what Mamba mentality and what Kobe means to me. What Kobe means to me is just because you're finished in one part of your life doesn't mean you're done. Mm -hmm. You're not done. So... Kobe doing what he did on the basketball court when he finished. Now he was doing what he did on the basketball court, being a father off the court and being a businessman with all his other stuff. And that's Mamba mentality. Mamba mentality is just because I'm great <laughs> in this one thing. Yeah. 
finish doing it here doesn't mean that I can't be great doing something else. And he didn't yeah. make any excuses. Mm -hmm. So that's Mamba mentality. Especially uh, the devastating part was when his daughter was involved, the 13-year-old Gianna. It was just devastating to see, see that. She was coming into her own. She was destined to be in UConn. And all this happened is just, it's just devastating. But uh, my last thing here, more than that, though, now the worst, what's what's terrible is there is a family that have that has two members that aren't there yeah. anymore, and never will be. And so regardless of how it affects us talking about it now, as soon as we're done talking about it, we get to go back to what we were doing. There's a family that never gets to do that. Mm -hmm. There's a family that never gets to go back to how it was or how it is. Like their new how it is is without two human beings that was in their life. Right. Like Kobe and G were not they they were not in our life. So when we're done when we get to talk about it, but they weren't in our mm -hmm. life. There's a family that doesn't get to do that. And that's where the devastation yeah. is. And the last thing here, would you like to say anything to all the frontline people that's helping us out right now during this? Uh... I think we all know what heroes are. I think we all know what heroes are. And we all know that there are jobs that have risks associated with them and even in those jobs that have risks associated with them and the people that take those jobs knowing the risks that are associated with them sometimes the people in those jobs still have to do things that are above and beyond even what the normal call of duty is for mm -hmm. them and that's what's heroic i mean I have friends that are in the healthcare industry and they know healthcare workers that won't go to work that are saying I'm on the bench and they're not going in. They're saying that I didn't sign up for this and they're not going to do it. Those, you know, and nobody's, nobody's really calling them out, right. but they're out there too. So the people that are going to do things to try and save all of us and doing it without the best protective gear that they can get and doing it anyway shows a side of humanity that should make us all hopeful mm -hmm. and all thankful that we have people like that as human beings that are willing to sacrifice themselves for the betterment of all of us because not all of us would do right. that. Not all of us would do that. So to those people that are out there and doing this to help all of us, regardless of whether you're protected perfectly or not protected at all and still doing it, there isn't a, there isn't a thank you that's proper. There just isn't. There isn't a thank you that would suffice, mm -hmm. but just knowing that there are those of us that realize the sacrifices that you are willing to make and how much we appreciate and love the fact that you are doing that. You know, even those people who have families out there, you know, now that, that they might be putting at risk too. It's, how do you thank someone for doing that for you as a human being? I don't I don't know that you properly can. Yeah, so well said. There he is, the great Michael Collins, uh, ESPN golf analyst, former PGA Tour caddy. Uh, it was an honor for you coming to come on my sports podcast today. Um, I'll be posting. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. I'll be posting this interview on all my social media formats, so everyone keep a lookout on Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. And uh, go follow uh, Michael Collins on ESPN. I mean, on Twitter, Instagram, and follow his stuff. And this guy is um, awesome. He does a great job. Um, and you and your family stay safe. And uh, thank you. Thanks, man. You do yeah. the same, man. I'm looking forward. I am looking forward to a time when we can actually do a bro hug and say what's up in person. <laughs> yeah. And also tune in tomorrow. I've been saying this for a while. When this is all over, I'm hugging. Every <laughs> uh, tune in tomorrow because I'm having Jay Harris on tomorrow.